Hey guys, in this video, we are calculating GDP and there are three different ways to calculate GDP. There's the expenditure approach, which is the spending approach. There's the income approach and there's the value added approach. But before we get into them, let's just talk about what is GDP guys? What is the thing we're trying to calculate? We're trying to figure out what is the total value of goods and services produced in some geographic area, usually a country, a nation within a specific time period, usually a quarter or a year, right? So again, we're trying to figure out the total value of goods and services produced in some specific area in a specific time period. That's what we're trying to calculate. And again, we've got three approaches. So we're going to go ahead and get into it here. All right. The first thing we're going to do is kind of a hybrid of the value added expenditure approach. We're kind of seeing how those two approaches relate to each other. It's probably a better way to say it. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a baseball bat. All right. From the ground up. Okay. From the beginning of the supply chain to the end. So we're going to have a lumberjack go out there, cut down a tree. We're going to have a lumber mill, refine that log into a refined piece of lumber. Then we're going to have them sell that to the manufacturer who's going to make the baseball bat. And and then the retail outlet's gonna sell it to the customer, okay? Now you can see there's data that's already been given, so we just wanna think through the table to fill this out, okay? We're gonna start with the lumberjack, okay? Well, it says cost of intermediate good. Well, the lumberjack's the beginning of the process, so they're not buying an intermediate good, so the cost of the intermediate good is zero. Now it says they're gonna sell this log to the lumber mill for $5. Well, if there's no intermediate good and they sell the log for $5, that means they added $5 of value, right? They added $5 of value. Basically what we're gonna be doing guys is looking at what are they gonna sell their step in the supply chain at, and then we're gonna subtract off the amount that they paid for the intermediate good, and that's always gonna give us the value added. But here, let's continue to see it play out, right? So blank and blank, right? Well, cost of intermediate good. Well, the lumber mill bought the log we know for $5, right? Well, if they sold it for five, that means they bought it for $5. So they bought the log for $5. It looks like they added five more dollars value, which means they sold their refined piece of lumber for 10 dollars right now if they sold it for ten dollars that means the manufacturer bought this refined piece of lumber for ten dollars so put ten dollars right there now they're going to sell the baseball bat that's right this is where the baseball bat's actually going to be made for twenty dollars well what does that mean it means they added ten dollars of value that's how much value they added and again, since they sold it for $20, that means the retail outlet must have bought it for $20. So we put in our $20 right there. They're gonna actually sell the bat to the end user at $80, right? And so they provided $60 of value. There it is, $60 of value. Now, interesting is if we look at this right here, right? The sale of the final good or service, that's the number that goes into the expenditure approach. We should associate this number with the expenditure approach. And if we sum up all the value added, we see the value added approach, right? And again, you sum that up, you're gonna get $80. So you see that link between the price of the final goods and services, sorry, the price of the final good or service and the value added at each step in the production process. Now we're gonna to get to the income approach, but before we do, I'm gonna kind of really quickly kind of walk us through what we're doing here, okay? So what we've got here is we've got households bringing labor, land, capital, and entrepreneurial ability through the resources to the businesses. The businesses are gonna use those four factors of production, land, labor, capital, entrepreneurial ability to produce goods and services. So GNS for goods and services taking those to the product market. And those goods and services are gonna to go to the four macro aggregate actors that spend money on goods and services, which are households, businesses, the rest of the world, and the government. So they're the ones that spend money on goods and services. Now, households, when they spend money, we call it consumption. When businesses spend money, we call it investment. When the rest of the world spends money, we call it export expenditures. And when the government spends money, we call it government purchases, right? So 
there we go. We've got the three major types of spending, right? Now, here's the interesting thing, is the rest of the world also provides goods and services to our domestic product market. So before we actually have GDP using the expenditure approach, the spending approach calculated GDP, there's my bell right there, we've got to subtract out the imports. We've got to subtract out the imports. I am. But what I hope that you see is if you take all of this right here, C plus I plus G plus X, and then subtract out the imports, you're going to have domestic revenues, which is basically our nominal GDP. And for right now, we'll just call it GDP, our GDP. That just means our dollar amount of GDP. Now, with those domestic revenues, they're going to have those now pay for the factors of production and any left over goes to that entrepreneur as profit. What do I mean by that? The labor is gonna be paid a wage. The people who provided the land or the natural resources are gonna be paid rents. People providing the financial capital to buy real capital are gonna be paid interest and the entrepreneur is gonna get any money left over after paying for all these costs, they're gonna get the profit. So again, this is GDP, this money flow going that direction, right? Again, C plus I plus G plus X minus IM gives us our GDP. And then that gets split out into our income flows. I'm trying to show you why the expenditure approach is going to equal the income approach, right? And so we go over here to kind of finish it off. This table right here. Again, each one of these rows is associated with each one of these companies right here. And this first one says $3, 50 cents and 50 cents. So what are we doing? What we're really trying to do is spread this value added over these different types of income. So that means this must be $1. Add that up, you get $5, okay? Now, we've now taken care of providing the log to the lumber mill. We've taken that and had all the income streams go to the resources used in harvesting the log and getting it to the lumber mill. But now we need to take the value added by the lumber mill, right? So remember, they bought the log for $5, but they added $5 of value. So that means $5 is gonna get spread across the resources the lumber mill used, right? And so that's gonna give us 250 right here, right? 50 cents plus a buck plus a buck is 250. I need to get to five dollars, so 250 goes there. Now we've got the manufacturer. They're going to add 10 dollars of value. Remember, they bought the intermediate good, the refined piece of lumber for 10 dollars. We've already spread the income over the resources up to this point, but they're adding 10 dollars of value, so we need to spread 10 dollars across the resources the manufacturing company used. So that's 10. What we got here is nine. That sums the nine. So we're missing $1. There we go. $1 in profit. By the way, pi sign for profit, pi sign for profit. Now, one more time, we've got $60 of value added by the retail outlet. So we've got to spread that 60 over these different types of income. This you can see adds to 45. We're missing out on 15. Now, if we sum up the wages here, right? We've got three and six, that's nine, and 15 is 24, and then 250 is 26.50, right? And then we're gonna add up all the rents, which we got 350, 30, looks like 33.50. I'm trying to do the math as fast as I can. And then we've got here, we've got two, uh, it's like three, 13 dollars. It looks like 13 dollars. And then finally, we've got Looks like a buck to seven dollars, right? And if we add seven to thirteen, it's twenty. On two thirty-three fifty gives us um, a, uh, that's that hard fifty-three fifty. Fifty-three fifty to, to the twenty-six fifty. Yep, we got what we expected to get. We're gonna get eighty dollars, right? If you sum up all of this again, this is my wages. This is my rent. This is my interest. This is my profit. If you sum each one, let's get a little color coded here with my addition sign plus 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 you can get eighty dollars hey that's what we got with the expenditure approach because that was the price of the final goods and service service hey that's what we got with the sum of the value added that was also eighty dollars all three approaches should conceptually 
give you the same number, right? We're trying to figure out what GDP is. We've got three approaches to calculate it. They're all good approaches, right? Solid conceptual approaches to calculate it. When we use any of the approaches, we should get the same number as we get in any other approach. Again, what are the three approaches? The expenditure approach, right? That's the spending approach, the value added approach, and the income approach. I hope that made sense to you. We'll see you in the next video.